So I've got another one of these compact fluorescent bulbs. This one was in service for the last couple of years, so it doesn't owe me anything. It's not like it burned out right out of the box, but it just failed in a unique way. So I think maybe we'll we'll see what's causing this thing. I, I don't think the lamp is burnt out. We're getting uh, the heaters are lighting up here, but uh, nothing striking in the lamp. So I thought, well, maybe maybe this thing can be popped apart, and we can just take a walk through this uh, this ballast and see why this lamp's not striking because it appears to be a ballast problem as opposed to a lamp problem so I wonder if I'm going to be able to pop this thing apart or whether it's going to break I've never taken one of these apart, this is a a Utilitech came in a pack of like, uh, it's a cool white or daylight color came in a pack of, um, I think there was six of them it, well, they weren't expensive, right, they were dirt cheap but um, and I've had it in operation for a couple of years, but say it just finally packed it in. So I thought maybe we might crack this thing apart and see whether we can see why it's failed. Maybe it's a small component or something that's gone bad. But let's just take a look at the ballast of this thing. I'm just going to try and pop this thing apart off camera because I don't know what's going to happen here. I think we'll probably have to just try prying it apart here. Oh, yeah, it'll come apart. Excellent. It'll come apart real easy. I don't have to do this off camera because this one's going to come right apart in my hand here. There we go. There's the uh, there's the inner workings of this, and I'm I'm suspecting that probably we're going to find a capacitor or something that's gone bad here, or maybe even a connection. But let's just take a quick let's just take a quick look at this and see what is causing this thing to fail, if we can. I know people are going to say, why am I wasting my time on a two dollar light bulb? Well, you know what? Because inquiring minds want to know what caused this to fail in the way that it failed. I certainly want to know why it failed the way it did. So if we look at how the lamp is actually connected, it's just it's just a wire wrap. So if we unwrap these pins, I can actually remove the ballast and we can get a look at the inverter. There. Now the inverter can be lifted off from the uh, lamp and we can get a look at this, uh, this little circuit board and see if there's any dry connections or anything on here my initial feeling is, is, is it's probably going to be one of these capacitors on here there's a couple big capacitors or film capacitors here and, and I bet you it's going to be one of these these is shorted so let's just put the meter on here and just see whether we have a short on either of these capacitors. Okay, let's check. The first one here is, I've just got my meter in regular ohms mode here. We'll just check this one here. Okay, uh, that one looks like it's okay. It's, 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 it's over, open, right? Now let's go to the other one over here. And, and this one's measuring 0.2 ohms. If you can see that or not, we'll just move that out of the way there. Now you can see it. This one's measuring 0.2 ohms. So that capacitor that's shorted. Let's just take it out. Okay, now I've got the capacitor out of the circuit. We'll measure it again just to verify that it's nothing else in the circuit that's shorted. But it is definitely this cap is 0.02 ohms which is about what the leads measure so it's dead shorted now I happen to have over here on my bench because I never throw anything away I happen to have another inverter here from another compact fluorescent and I bet these caps are probably very similar in size and ratings this one doesn't say anything on it but I'm sure that on this one this one here blue you can see it's that cap blue on this inverter so I bet you this one here is the same or similar value let's just pop it off and, and see Verify it's not shorted.
which it's not. It's going into an overload condition. Therefore, we know that that cap is not bad. Let's just put it on the board here. Okay, some solder off here first. I can line up the pins. I know that someone's. I'm going to get a whole bunch of thumbs down on this, you know, because people are going to people are going to thumbs down this video like it's diseased. I don't know why, you know, but people are going to thumbs down this video, and then I'm going to get called a loser for you know even attempting to fix this. But you know what? It's going to get thousands of views, <laughs> like the last one, with the bad solder connection. The bloody videos had like a hundred, over a hundred thousand views, and uh, you know it uh, never ceases to amaze me that yeah, people will watch it, even though something like this isn't worth fixing. It's just I think it's just I find it interesting to see what goes wrong with them from an engineering perspective. Why the thing broke down. And can we make the thing work? Okay, now that I've got the capacitor soldered back in, let's just straighten out these leads a bit. And I'll reattach the, the lamp. I guess it goes on like that it just kind of sits in here and they're just twisted on so we can attach them the same way that they were on before just twist the leads around here It shows how fast they make these things, right? They don't even solder the, the lamps on, they just do a do a wire wrap on it. It's good enough. Okay, that's one side down. Do the same on the other one. Make sure we aren't shorting anything out here. Okay, it's ugly, but you know what? It'll work. Make sure nothing's touching. Snap the base back together. I haven't snapped it all the way together yet. I want to see if it lights. It's either going to go light or it's going to go boom. It lights! That's all it was. That little capacitor was popped. Thanks for watching. Remember to hit that thumbs up button, not the thumbs down button. Catch ya later.